Hello, it's John Heaton, and today I'm going to do part two of my uh, solo Beatles top 100. So I'm going to do 50 through 75 on this video, and then we'll do 1 to 50 in the next two. Um, so just before I start, a couple of comments. Uh, I, I noticed already people are already expressing their either their hope that some song is going to feature or their disappointment that certain song is not going to feature. Uh, I just tend, uh, hate to stress this too much but uh, it is just my list and it's not supposed to be definitive certainly not supposed to agree with your list um, and not to be taken too seriously I mean there's a couple of comments I've had recently which have been a bit disappointing most of you are very generous and nice in your comments um, one guy on my live album review said that because I picked out a few favorites in the end he said the fact that you haven't talked about Made in Japan by Deep Purple makes the rest of what you have to say basically meaningless so you know sorry I couldn't improve in include every live album under the sun I just picked a few favorites from my collection and you've no doubt got yours and that's fine um, but but how can one in a video like that name everyone's favorite live album it's, it's physically impossible I'd be here till Christmas um, Larry Graves, um, a.k.a. Canadian Stud Muffin, the other day did an album on second albums by various artists, and he, again, just picked a few from his collection. And some commenter got very upset because he'd missed out Neil Young's second solo album. And basically saying, if you've missed that one out, you've kind of missed the point. Um, and Larry kind of semi-politely said, you know, I, I can't possibly cover everyone's second album in this video, and he's quite right. So anyway, so without laboring the point, this is a personal thing, it's subjective, uh, it's not definitive, and it's colored by multiple factors such as favoritism, such as childhood, such as, you know, whether you were going through a good phase in your life or a bad phase and a certain record cheered you up. Um, I was, I'm not going to give you the figures um, of how many John songs, George songs, Paul songs, Ringo songs featured in the overall 100. I'll probably give you that at the end. But I'd just like to point out that it's a little unfair on John in particular because we've only got five or six albums to choose from and there's only 10 years of creativity there to choose from and, and five of those he wasn't even in the recording studio. Um, George a few more years of creativity but again long periods of inactivity and he died in 2001 um, so we've only got about 10 or 11 albums from George. Um, Paul and Ringo um, by contrast we've got more than 50 years of albums to choose from so I think almost inevitably the, I won't give the game away but there's probably a likelihood that I'm going to choose a few more Paul songs than John and George just just through sheer weight of numbers being available. But anyway, enough with the, the background and the whatever. Let's go to number 75, and I've chosen the outstanding single, from, first single from Venus and Mars, Listen to What the Man Said. I think, unlike some of the other songs on this album, the album version knocks it out of the park and is far better than any live version he's ever attempted, whether on Wings Over America or the 75 tour, or more recently I saw him in Vienna do this song quite decently, but uh, nothing, nothing can beat the studio take with Dave Mason supplying acoustic guitar and Tom Scott just came into the studio and, and did the sax solo in one take. And uh, it was a touch of genius. He tried it a few more times, but nothing didn't get the same feel. 74, we've got a B-side from George, Deep Blue, B-side of Bangladesh, and in my view, far superior to the A-side. Um, a lovely song written about his mother who just died a few months before, I think. Um, very sad, but uh, very nice guitar, very nice melody. Um, and in a, in a strange way, quite uplifting, although it's a, it's a sad subject matter. Number 73, it's another George song, which I'd missed off the list ori originally, so I had to quickly um, so-called get rid of one track I'd chosen. I can't remember which one it was in this case, but I put Mystical One there because it's such an outstanding track, lead, lead song of side two of Gone Tropper 1982. Um, just everything about this track is magical and mystical. Number 72, another George track from All Things Must Pass from side three, Apple Scruffs, the song he wrote for the, the fans who would be out there in the rain um, through the pleasure and the pain. Um, 
with the flowers in your hand. Uh, just a wonderful, heartfelt song to the Apple Scruffs, Carol Bedford and the others. And famously, George, having completed the song, invited them all in to come and listen to it in the EMI studios at Abbey Road. Can you imagine how exciting that would have been? Get, would have been for them brilliant number 71 I've chosen a Ringo track from Goodnight Vienna I think this is an underrated track doesn't often get talked about all by myself uh, storming piano entry apparently Lennon's playing sort of rhythm guitar but you can hardly hear him uh, but lovely bass vocal from Richard Perry and a really fun happy-go-lucky tune and and um, lyric about sort of self you know I can manage, I can cope on my own, because he just recently split up with his wife, actually. Number 70, I've got the lead off lead track from Ram, which, although it's coloured by the fact that it contains a dig or a two at John, I uh, still think it's a brilliant track. And um, I'm glad he did change the words, because originally he was going to sing um, Yoko took your lucky break and broke it in two. You know, when he says... Um, that was your first mistake. Yoko took your lucky break and broke it in two. Now what can be done for you? You broke it in two, or she broke it in two. Can you imagine how upsetting that would have been for John and Yoko if it actually hadn't changed that line? So uh, th thankfully, common sense prevailed and he did change it. But it's just a storming song and a great opener to Ram. Number 69, we're going with Plastic Ono Band song from John, 1970, Isolation. Glorious chord. John had only recently started playing the piano more than uh, before. He'd only played piano occasionally on the odd Beatles song in quite simple fashion. But here on Plastic Ono Band, he learnt a few kind of new chords. And this chord sequence at the beginning of Isolation particularly earned the admiration of Klaus Vormann, I seem to remember. And it is, it is beautiful and the words are just wonderful. You know, just a boy and a little girl trying to save the whole wild world. Um, just just a very touching song and a storming sort of bit in the middle where John screams and then back to the softly spoken verse. Um, number 68, we're going to track, choose a track from Sentimental Journey from Ringo, 1970. It's probably not the, not the one you're expecting. It's not the title track. It's not Bye Bye Black, but I've gone with the last track, Let the Rest of the World Go By. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, they're all cover songs, so Ringo didn't write any of them, but I think this song is very well Produced, I forgot who produced it actually, this last song. And uh, Ringo even harmonizes with himself, which is very rare. I don't think I can quote too many examples of that. So that's a lovely song. 67, another track from self titled George Harrison, 79, Soft Touch, the penultimate track from side two. And um, this is just gorgeous. I know George at the time did an interview with Rolling Stone saying, uh, my least two favourite tracks on the new album are the last two, Soft Touch and If You Believe. He, he just says he thought they were a bit obvious. But I think they're gorgeous. And the subject matter is very fitting because he just had a, um, like a, a warm sun rising, a pun on the, the sun in the sky and the fact that his son had just been born. Um, just, just very heartfelt words and he was going through a very happy period and it's very evident in this song. Um, lovely guitar, lovely musicianship as always on that album. 66, gone with the Lennon comeback single, Just Like Starting Over. Um, maybe at the time when I first heard it on a shitty transistor radio, I, I was less than impressed, but put it on a decent stereo with Tony Levin's bass and Andy Newmark's drumming coming through and it's just brilliant and actually the stripped down version is even better I think because it's less sort of cluttered by female backing vocals and stuff. I just think it's a very strong single and it rightly got to the top 10 before he died it before then obviously got getting to number one. Number 65 the lead off track from the Ringo album 73 gone with I'm the greatest uh, very amusing Lennon track which he couldn't have recorded himself because people have would have taken it oh so seriously so giving it to Ringo was the perfect thing to do although Lennon's on hand to do superb backing vocals now I'm a man a woman took me by the hand and you know what she told me I was great and uh, George Harrison's on guitar so it was it's practically a Beatles reunion Paul probably would have been there but he had visa problems at the time I think number 64 Mrs Vanderbilt from Band on the Run this is another one that I left out of my original list I thought oops have to put this one in somewhere because I've even rediscovered it, not that it needed rediscovering, but on the, the Band on the Run under dub mixes, 
it's particularly fine there as well, although not too different from the album version. But it's just a very up-tempo, happy-go-lucky song from Paul with wonderful bass and acoustic guitar from Danny and Paul supplying drums. So I guess it's not a complete live take because Paul would have actually either have to overdub the drums or the the bass. He can't play both at the same time. But on the other hand, it sounds as if you're in the room in Lagos with them playing along. So. Uh, wonderful vibe to that song. 63, we've gone, we're going to go with number nine, Dream, from Walls and Bridges. Paul, uh, John is sort of not too fond of this song, saying it was a bit like craftsmanship and n no particular inspiration based on a dream he'd had, and he used the string arrangement for many years to cr Rivers to Cross, which he'd recorded for Harry Nielsen's Pussycats album, which John had produced, and he'd, he'd nicked the string arrangement, which he'd written, and um, put it on number nine, Dream, and it works very well. He covered his voice in echo to make him sound as if he was coming from a dream, and it's a glorious tune, and Jesse Ed Davis is playing very Harrison-esque guitar, just to wrap it all up. Uh, 62, we've gone with the, the final track from the self-titled George Harrison album, the other track which George was, wasn't too keen on can't think why, because it's absolutely gorgeous. He co-wrote this song with Gary Wright. Not sure who wrote which bit. I think maybe Gary Wright wrote that sort of twiddly bit in the middle um, with the funny chords, and then George wrote the, the verse, I think. Um, but I, you know, I'm not sure about that. 61, Cafe on the Left Bank from London Town, very underrated track. Uh, just snuck in there on the second tr sac second song of side one after the title track and uh, love Jimmy's guitar playing. I love Paul's bass and I love the words sort of remin reminiscing about his time with John, I think, in Paris before the Beatles became famous when they just, uh, I think John had been given a hundred pounds from his Scottish grandmother. So Paul and John just up sticks and went to Paris for the week or the weekend. I think they were going to go to Spain, but they didn't get past Paris, as, so the story goes. So that's a good track. 60, we're going to go with Intuition, the lead-off song from side two of Mind Games from John. 73, I just think this is a lovely song, and, and I love the musicianship from Ken Asher on the organ and Gordon Murray on the bass. Uh, a lot of people slag off this band, saying they're too American, they don't know how to play reggae, blah, blah. But I think they get a good, really good feel on this song, and I love I love the, the message of the words as well. Uh, Uncle Albert from Paul is number 59, Admiral Halsey from Ra the Ram album, a tour de force. And George Martin helped out with the orchestrations, although he wasn't credited at the time, because Paul, I think, it was a bit too close to the Beatles, and Paul didn't want to be associated publicly with George Martin, so he didn't. He left him off the credits, and it was only till the archi only when the archive edition came out fairly recently that he, people knew that he was involved. But anyway, so he supplies the strings. Um, it's famous that Hugh McCracken suggested the guitar parts to Paul, because previously Paul had told Hugh and before him Dave Spinoza roughly what to play, but on this song he said to Hugh, I don't really know what I'm after here, so you see what you come up with, and so Hugh was allowed to contribute and came up trumps because I think some of his guitar work is superb on on this track and just lovely melody and and, and it's a medley of three songs put together but who, who cares about that is they work really well and Paul's done this a number of times in his career usually successfully number 58 we're going to have with Mother go with Mother from Plastic Ono Band it's quite depressing to listen to and it's not the kind of song you'd pick for a party but uh it's a very moving song if you're in the mood. Ringo on the drums, Klaus Vollmann on the bass, and John on the piano, just accompanying himself uh, to, to his harrowing vocal. Uh, first verse about his mother, second verse about his father, and then second verse kind of to all the children of the world, because he didn't have any ch children of his own at the time. Um, and then finishing with mother, mother don't go, daddy come home you know, heartbreaking, but uh, very, very emotionally sung and um, good melody. It's 57, we're going to go with a latter day George Harrison track, Poor Little Girl, um, which was a sort of bonus track on The Greatest Hits, Volume 2, Best of Dark Horse. Um, probably would have fitted nicely onto Cloud Nine and been a standout track. Um, as it is, it didn't really help sing, sell The Greatest Hits album, as James Griffiths said the other day, a bit of a flop, that album. Not for want of having good material on it, because it's got plenty, but um, <coughs> I really like this song. And apparently it's not produced by Jeff Lynne, although it sounds very Jeff Lynne, ELO-esque. 
I'm sure Jeff Lynne's featured on backing vocals. So I'm pretty sure that's him there. But I think the actual production is not credited to Jeff Lynne on this one. Number 56, No More Lonely Nights from Paul from 1984. The, easily the highlight of Good Marigards to Broad Street, which was not much of a movie. And the soundtrack album was basically retreads of songs he'd done before with Wings and with the Beatles. But this song was new, it was brilliant, and it got pretty high in the charts. I can't remember exactly high, t how high, but top five, I think, on both sides of the Atlantic. Brilliant. Dave, Dave Gilmore playing the guitar solo. 55, Beautiful Girl from George Harrison from 33 and a Third. 1976 and lovely song to Olivia, his new girlfriend who he would marry a couple of years later. Um, just beautiful guitar work on this album. His guitar work had been a little bit underplayed on Extra Texture, but it was back, back on form on this album and no more so than on this track. 54, we're going to go with Bring On The Lucy, Free To People, last song on the side, one of Mind Games from John, 73. And I love this song, um, good message. You know, you think you're cool and know what you're doing. 666 is your name. We don't want to even know, want to know your game. Uh, just wonderful lyrics around about the time of Watergate or just before. Uh, very relevant because they were trying to kick him out of the country and basically he was trying to get his own back a little bit. And being a little bit reserved, not being quite as political and antagonistic as he'd been the previous year and sometime in New York City, but it was still quite a biting song. Uh, and I love it. Number 53, we we're going to go with Don't Let Me Wait Too Long from Living in the Material World, George Harrison. And it could have easily been a single, and it nearly was, but it was pulled at the last minute. Maybe, I can't remember the reason why it was pulled, actually. Um, or maybe it wasn't seriously considered, but um, in either, either event, it, it's an album track now, which is not particularly well known outside of the fan base. Um, maybe it's because it's a, too, a bit too stop and start, you know, the, the, in between the uplifting chorus you've got this sort of section which is slows down the song, so maybe that wasn't, wasn't, was why it wasn't chosen as a single, but I really love it. Um, number 52, Letting Go from Wings, and I've gone with the live version from Wings Over America, which I think is infinitely superior to the version on the album Winners and Mars. Not that the album version is bad, but this one is just really rocks and Jimmy McCulloch's when it comes in and then Joe English comes in on the drums. Um, I just think it's absolutely sensational and one of the true highlights of Wings Over America. In 51 we've got The Light That Has Lighted The World from George Harrison, a very touching ballad. Um, I've heard that some people say that I've changed, that I'm not what I was. No, it really is a shame and I'm grateful to everyone that's happy or free living their life and not looking to see the, the light that has lighted the world or something like that. I probably misquoted it, but uh, you get the gist. Uh, he's, he's not being judgmental on this song. He's just being very spiritual. Um, number 50, going to go with Remember from Plastic Ono Band, first song on side two, pounding piano, pounding song, well sung by John. Love the bass playing from Klaus, love the drumming from Ringo. One of the few upbeat songs on that album could have done with maybe a couple more. I found out is obviously upbeat, um, but this is a very successful song and it made my number 50. So this is 50 through 75. I'm sorry if you didn't agree. Hope some of your songs feature here or on my 76 to 100. Next time out, we'll do 26 to to 40, 25 to 49 and then we'll do the top lot on the next one after that so thank you for watching see you next time